Good morning, it's Dr. Alan Yim. In this video, we're moving on to the second method of moving from one chord to the next in root position with the bass moving by a fourth or a fifth. In the last video, we already covered how to do this by keeping one common tone and moving the other two voices by step in the same direction. Now, we're going to use a new method where we move all of the voices, so there are no common tones, but we are going to move only by either a step or a third. Now what's important in this method is to keep in mind that we're keep trying to make this easy to sing and sound good. There is one possible danger in this method, and I have to warn you about it because though I say no parallels, there is a possibility, and I'm going to erase this, that you could create a parallel in this. So I'll hopefully watch out for one type of parallel. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. There are ways to avoid it, but the, the type that you could come up with is the hidden fifth, okay, or octave. Actually, it's, I think it's one of these types, but let's see if we, we'll see if we can get to this. All right, first of all, I'm going to write still again in the key of C. I'll try to keep this sort of how we had it before, moving by a fifth up. It doesn't matter which one you do, but for consistency, I will use the same starting chord and see what happens. All right, so here we are. I think it looked like this. No, it was an open chord and it looked like this. Okay, and now we have to move to the five chord, the G chord. And I'm going to try to do this by moving the voices in, uh, well, I'll show you. Okay, so. If the bass is moving by a fifth, we're going to move the, the other voices in the same direction. Now, you move them to the closest voice in the next chord. So, let's start with the tenor. The closest note, and remember it is GB, there we go, is going to be D. Notice my ledger line there, I'm trying to keep it about the same, not in the middle between the two staves. The G, well, we could keep the note the same, but that would be the prior method. So we have to go up to the B. And guess what? This is the danger. Okay, so notice, it's always risky to move the voices all in the same direction. And guess what I just made? We have a hidden octave. So a hidden octave. How do you avoid this? Well, it's pretty simple. You can move the, the bass in the opposite direction. Here's what the parallel sounds like. So. And you notice in that second chord, the bass and the soprano, the voices that need the most independence, suddenly sing in unison. So it. Early composers say Bach, or anybody in the Renaissance, and probably anybody in the Baroque, would hear that and recognize that it is a problem. So to fix it, I'm simply going to take that bass note, and I'm going to move it in the opposite direction. So instead of going up to the G, I'm going to write down. Now we have contrary motion. It's not the greatest solution, but it's no longer a parallel, a hidden um, interval. <laughs> I don't think that sounds really fantastic, but it's better than what we had before. So there you have it. Notice if the bass moves by a fourth, then you can see we go in the opposite direction. That suggests something. Maybe that it's better in some ways. To, if you're going to use this method, maybe it's better to have the bass moving by a fourth. 
So when you see the bass moving by a fourth, the chords are in root position, and you don't want to go from one to the next, you can use this method no problem. When the bass moves by a fifth, you must be a little bit careful not to get this one situation where the soprano is leaping. They're going um, in similar motion and they end on an octave. In that case, you have this parallel octave. So that's method two. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.